with PlayStation, I feel like it was constantly leaping into the future, what we were expecting to be important in the future. But I feel like there's something missing. Hello, and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. This is an episode of Water Break or Hydration Station. Maybe we'll come up with a third name and just add that to the list as well. An exciting piece of news happened today. It is the release of new information about the PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 is definitely coming. Holiday is 2020. 2020, so next year, Christmas time. And we do have also more information about the console itself. But what I'm noticing is that a sort of the sort of strange thing going on with PS5 is that it doesn't really have <laughs> any specific gimmick at all, apart from having an SSD built in. Now I thought I felt this way when they released information about PlayStation 5 earlier this year. It's like, okay, it's gonna be a new console, and it's gonna have an SSD, and it's gonna run Spider-Man really fast. It's like, the, the main demo, and the main thing that they were excited about was that you're going to be able to load levels from Spider-Man really quickly. You'd be forgiven for not being too excited about that, right? Because what's an SSD? Well, an SSD is, it's in everything. An SSD is in your iPad, an SSD is in your phone. Developers can rely on you to have this SSD built in as standard to your PS5, and they can program their games to take advantage of it. According to what I'm reading here on Wired, it's saying that the hard disk would have to seek through multiple different places, and that's why they would have multiple copies of the same code, so it could do a single read of data in a straight line, and that would ease loading times, apparently. But because it's gonna have this SSD, apparently it doesn't need to worry about a physical spindle needle seeking around on the hard disk. Apart from that, the only other thing that was especially exciting to me, apart from, you know, maybe ray tracing, I think ray tracing is quite exciting in general for gaming just because it's gonna make things look, it's gonna make Minecraft look really nice. I'm just kidding, it's gonna make lots of games look really nice. But what I'm trying to get at is that it doesn't seem like PS5 has any ex especially great gimmicks that are going to bring new people on board. And maybe that's because they've reached this point where so many people have PS4s already, or had a PS3 already. Basically, they're so far into the PlayStation brand that they don't really need to appeal to people who've never bought a PlayStation before. But when you look at the consoles that have come out recently, things like Nintendo Switch, like Nintendo went out of their way to make sure that people understood that there was a great little gimmick here. You could play this in the docking station, plugged into your TV. Or if you wanted to go on the go, you could plug the controllers directly into the exact same piece of hardware. Take it on the train and you play the exact same game, albeit in a slightly lower resolution. But when I think back to the PS4 coming out, and I have to admit, when the PS4 came out and my channel was just beginning, I actually didn't really see much need for a PS4. I was so out of touch with gaming when this channel started that to me, the PS4 was this unnecessary thing that they were superseding the PS3 just for the sake of coming up with a new console. I was perfectly fine with the graphics that was being shown to me on my PS3. So I was a very, very casual consumer on the run up to PS4. Obviously when I finally got a PS4, and started making more videos for the channel. I started to understand what was so great about it. But even so, when the PS4 released, it released when the PS Vita was already out. And so the idea, on, especially with a lot of the marketing, it was going to allow you to like play certain games and then you could like stop halfway through and then pick it back up on the go on your PS Vita. It was gonna be so well synchronized between the two devices. It all seemed like it was new, and exciting. I actually don't remember when they were talking about VR, but eventually VR came on board, and so PS4 was exciting because it was also this home console that would allow you to play this new exciting thing, VR. PS4 really felt like it was going to evolve the PS3 into the internet era. It was gonna be much more socially connected and much more current. From what I'm seeing with PS5, it looks like it's got an SSD, and the other thing that they're really excited about, apart from maybe ray tracing as well, is this new DualShock controller, which apparently, and there's no photos on the website, it's just gonna look, it's just gonna look a lot like a PS4 DualShock 4 controller. And I'm in love with this controller. I think it works fantastically well. But when you go through the history of PlayStation consoles, you got the PS1, which was incredible because it was 3D graphics when most of us still owned Super Nintendos. PlayStation is 3D, cool. And then PlayStation 2 came out and dual, I mean, analog sticks was already on PS1, but PS2, it had like the emotion engine, I think they called it. Like everyone was really excited about Final Fantasy X on PS2 
because it's just going to look so amazing without FMV videos. It wasn't going to be pre-rendered video. It was going to actually, they were going to have emotions on their faces on in-game characters. And so PS2 was clearly a big step forward in terms of not just graphics, but just ability for characters to have expression. And then the PS3 was coming out and it was like, We'd gone from the PS2, which as far as I remember, didn't have a modem built in. You could like, you could like buy a modem and you could like, whoops. You could like buy a modem and I think you could slot it into the PS2. So PS2 did perfectly well without internet connectivity. But then PS3 came out and then came the world of updating your console all the time. And I remember I still was quite a casual gamer at the time. And I remember every single time I plugged in my PS3, it would it would say, you need to update your console. I didn't actually realize at the time you could just press cancel and play the game without updating. I thought I had to ca update every single time. And I remember there's this one tweet, which was like my favorite tweet of all time, is some guy, I think he's a game dev, and his daughter was like talking to him while he was on his PlayStation 3. I think she said, Daddy, what, are you, what game are you playing now? And he goes, I'm playing Update the PS3 as a joke. He just said it as a joke. And his daughter replied, you play that game a lot. <laughs> That's like, that'll always go down in history as one of my favorite tweets of all time. But what I'm trying to say is that PS3 took PlayStation into the internet era. Not only could we update games and play games that were constantly getting DLC and getting updated, and that was kind of scary at first, but we got used to it eventually, but also being able to play games online. You could play multiplayer games, fighting games, you could play shooting games, you could play all sorts of stuff competitively now. And then like I was explaining just now with the PS4, with the PS Vita as well as par as part of the strategy, it was all very exciting. Maybe playing your console games and then quitting halfway through and then picking back up where you left off on your PS Vita. Of course, that never happened in the end, but that was like the plan. Of course, every single time, graphics is gonna get better, but that's never been like the main gimmick. It was like 3D graphics is a thing. Now it's 3D graphics with expression. And now we've got a console that's on the internet. And now we have a console with VR capabilities as well. Plus it's gonna be, it's gonna work really well with the PS Vita and it's all social now. And you can see what all your other friends are playing and you can jump into their game. You can see what they're playing and send them an invite and you can play online with them. And it was all very, very new. But I'm looking at these updates with the PS5 and and in terms of like experience, it looks like the main thing that's going to be quite different is this PS5, sorry, this DualShock 5 controller, which they might not call it that. Developers are going to be able to control how much tension is on the trigger buttons here. So right now, it's always the same amount of tension no matter what a game I'm playing. But presumably, if you're playing on a racing game, they can put more tension on the accelerator, on the gas pedal, or when you're playing shooting games, maybe it'll have lots of tension so that it maybe clicks more like the, the trigger of a gun, something like that. It's just that coming right after the Nintendo Switch, where it's like, okay, we've got the, you know, 3D rumble or whatever they call it. I can't remember what they call it. I think HD rumble, but I don't think it's, it, you know, in terms of marketing, it's quite exciting to talk about HD rumble on the Switch, but in the end, it really makes no difference to, I think, probably the majority of people who play Switch games. And also, you're gonna be able to feel textures. When you play a racing game, you'll know whether you're driving through mud or whether you're driving on ice or if you're driving on normal tarmac. I still can't imagine what that actually means, apart from it's just got a very advanced form of haptic feedback. Without video footage, I really have no idea what they're actually planning for this new controller, but I don't think it's going to be like you change the mode and it feels like the skin of a snake, the scales of a snake, and then you change the mode again and then it feels like mud. It's more like you're playing it and when you're driving, it's going to rumble differently on mud compared to how, the way it rumbles when you're driving on ice. Of course, it's gonna be more advanced than what we've got in the DualShock 4, but I think it's gonna be a lot like, you know, on, on iPhone, you know, it's got a haptic or a taptic engine built in. So instead of only rumbling, it can sometimes like give you a, a knock. So you're, you're like holding it, it's just like, and kind of knocks in place. If you've got an iPhone or an Apple Watch, you know what I'm talking about. So it's not like this magical thing where it's like the texture of the controller changes and it feels like a snake now. That doesn't mean I'm not excited though. I am really excited about PlayStation 5 just because, actually, more importantly, I'm excited about PS5 because I think no matter what, no matter how much we want eSports to continue going towards PC, I think PlayStation is always going to be, well for now, 
a very important part of esports. It's clearly not going anywhere soon. What interests me more about PS5 so far is this talk about the user interface and how you'll be able to interact more with your games before you've actually booted them up. And they're saying also again, thanks to this SSD and the way that it's being built. Maybe you can download parts of the game in a more modular fashion. So you can have the lobby system where you're talking and chatting. Maybe maybe you only go into Fortnite to chat with people. You don't even play the game part. You don't play the main campaign part. So it looks like maybe the lobby chat section will be separate to the arcade mode, which is separate to the story mode, which is separate to the multiplayer network competitive mode. They feel the pressure from mobile where everyone is downloading games quickly and easily, and they want to be able to do the same thing with PlayStation. They want you to be able to just press a button and instantly start interacting with the gaming communities without having to wait for 40 gigabytes or 60 gigabytes to download. I remember when I downloaded Monster Hunter World or Marvel's Spider-Man, they, they were huge, huge games, and I was like, wow, it just so happens I have to ha I, that I have a really fast internet connection, but for some people, this could take maybe eight or nine hours to download. Now, the reason that the UI interests me more than the actual hardware aspect of itself is because of this little thing called Google Stadia. If you're not familiar with it already, Google is coming out with this gaming console system, which is not really a console. It's any device, it's not any device. If you have a phone that runs Android, or if you've got a PC that can run in a Chrome browser, basically they want you to be able to play games on their network platform, which stream from Google to your device. So you can play on your TV, which has a Chromecast hooked up, or you can play it on your Android phone, or you can play it on your tablet, or you can play it on a lot of things without downloading the game at all. It's just going to stream the visuals of the game running on a PC somewhere in Google's headquarters. Not headquarters, you know what I mean. On a computer run by Google somewhere, and then they're going to beam the visuals to your device and you don't have to download anything. And it's going to be instant. And that's what confuses me about PS5 not really talking too much about that aspect because if I feel like game streaming, whether I like it or not, are going to, is going to be a really important part of console strategy going forward or PC game strategy. It's going to be less of a race on who can get the best graphics and more like actual war where I think I think there was a part there was a point in time in history that was less about how much artillery and firepower you could give to your troops it was like more about how fast you could send communication if you could get a message from A to B faster than anyone else then you could win entire wars and battles I don't want to say it's like console war has come to that point I just feel like this whole being able to get the game into people's hands as quickly as possible with no downloads at all, literally just streaming it to devices. And with 5G, people talking about 5G and how fast and amazing 5G is gonna be in the future. It just feels like that should probably be a bigger part of the PS5 release. But hey, it's only coming out in holiday 2020, so we will see how their strategy changes. But from what I'm seeing so far, it seems like PS5 is exciting because it has a really fast hard disk and a controller which is pretty much what we've already come to expect, but you'll feel different textures. But apart from that, no other major like quantum leaps, unlike when Nintendo Switch came out. It was like, we're changing the shape of the console, the way you interact with it completely. You're gonna be at home and then you're gonna take it out the dock and go places mobile with it. And that was like quite a big difference to the way that people thought of Nintendo consoles. And with PlayStation, I feel like it was constantly leaping into the future, what we were expecting to be important in the future. And when PS4 was coming out, social was clearly a massive, massive thing that PS4 needed to be part of. And it was clearly clear that the PS4 was bringing us into that era. I'm not saying that Google Stadia is going to be where it's at. I know nothing about really what kind of games are going to be on Google Stadia. I have no idea how su successful that's going to be. It just seems like at this current point in time, if there's anything to say that is going to be huge in the near future, it's probably game streaming. I don't see anything about how PlayStation intends to contend with game streaming in the future. That's basically all I have to say about PlayStation 5 so far. Of course, it's going to be faster than the PS4, it's going to look nicer than the PS4, and it's gonna have a more interesting controller than the PS4. But I feel like there's something missing. It's like, it's 
they're not telling us what's going to take PlayStation into the future. And before, it was like social is going to be big, and so PS4 is going to make it life even more, like our gaming lives going to become even more social. And I feel like with PS5, in, in the near future, gaming is going streaming, and it's going to be immediate, and there's going to be no downloading whatsoever. And I don't see anything about how PS5 plans to be part of that. All I know really is that they already had a system like that called PlayStation Now. I just don't know how successful it was, but I feel like it's going to be an important part of gaming in the future. I just don't know exactly how yet. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Is this pretty much all we have to expect from PS5? Better graphics, ray tracing, and a haptic controller, and maybe a microphone built in for a little voice assistant? Or do you think there's a bit more that we don't know about yet? That's going to be an important part of the strategy for PS5. That's going to separate it and make it really exciting. Because right now, I'm missing the killer app. What is the killer feature of PS5 that's going to make me feel like I really need to buy my games on console? Because I'm going to be honest, since PS4 came out, I've moved very much closer to PC. What do you think? Do you think that this is it? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. And I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream or on Discord. See you next time. Mm -hmm.